Hi all of you. Welcome to another lecture of antenna and wave propagation. The topics for discussion today is the mobile station antennas and the design of a rectangular patch antennas. Myself Maria Joseph, Assistant Professor in Electronics and Communication Engineering Department of MBCCT Pyramid leading the session. Welcome to all of you. First, we'll start with the mobile station antennas. What are the specialities of mobile station antennas? The antenna for mobile phones should enable connection to the base station in all locations and orientations of the mobile unit. We know that the antennas used for the mobile phones should get connection in all the locations and orientations. For small cellular handsets, the incoming fields consists of several multipath signals so the antenna receives several signals in random directions of arrival and polarization that is the incoming field may consist of several multipath signals and so the antenna receives the signals with all random directions of its arrival and polarization in most environments the vertical polarization dominates making a vertically polarized omnidirectional antenna like a vertical dipole. The most critical performance goals especially for antennas of small portable phones are adequate ha, are supposed to have adequate bandwidth and high efficiency. The bandwidth can be calculated from the following equation that is the bandwidth is equal to s minus 1 divided by q u star the square root of s yes, that is the bandwidth is given by the relative impedance bandwidth q u is the unloaded quality factor what is q u q u is called the unloaded quality factor and s yes is the vswr okay the antennas on cellular handsets the volume of a typical handset is less than 100 cubic centimeter and that of antenna is not more than 5 cubic centimeter. So a typical handset that we carry is less is having a size or volume of less than 100 cubic centimeter and in that the antenna is having only a volume of 5 cubic centimeter. At 800 to 900 megahertz, this requirement makes it difficult to achieve system bandwidths of 10% without inducing currents on entire handset cases, making antenna element more as a coupling structure than a radiating element. So it is very difficult to form or achieve system bandwidths of 10% without inducing currents in the handsets. Next is the monopole and dipole antennas. The antennas on handsets may be considered equivalent to either a monopole or an asymmetric dipole. Here the antenna works above its resonant frequency which has to be taken into account in the matching circuit. Just note what is monopole and dipole antennas used in uh, handsets. Normal mode helical antennas. A normal mode helical antennas may be used for circular polarization. Okay. Next is the internal antennas. The antenna may be enclosed inside a handset. There are mainly two types of antennas. That is the planar antennas and the chip antenna. A planar antenna is basically uh, or usually a lambda by 4 microstrip mounted on a conducting cases of handset. Such antennas are called planar antenna. It is usually lambda by 4 microstrip mounted on a conducting cases. Next is the chip antenna and they are very small and they must be mounted in a certain manner on the circuit board of the phone chip. That is they are mounted on the chip. I am mean, like mounted in a certain manner on circuit board of the phone. Okay. Uh, then you have the antenna diversity for mobile stations antenna diversity is difficult to implement on handsets because of limited space we have a very small size it has been seen that the low correlation between the outputs of two antennas can be achieved in cellular handsets with antenna spacing less than 0.2 lambda wavelength 
we have two antennas placed inside the cellular handsets. Next is the rectangular patch antennas. It is a type of antenna. This is most widely used configuration. It is very easy to analyze using both the transmission line and the cavity models. This is the basic structure of a transmission line model of a rectangular patch antennas. Because of the dimensions of the patch are finite along the length and width, the fields at the edge of the patch undergo fringing. And the figure shows two radiating slots of the microstrip antenna. Since some of the wave travels in the substrate and some in air, we have two equations associated with the rectangular patch antennas. The first one is the effective dielectric constant are referred as static values and it is given by E epsilon effective is epsilon r plus 1 divided by 2 plus epsilon r minus 1 by 2 into 1 plus 12h by w the whole raised to minus 1 by 2 that will be equation number 1. The equation number 2 this is uh, actually um, we have a very popular and practical approximate relation for the normalized extension of length in an antenna and that is this equation that is delta L by H is 0.412 epsilon effective plus 0.3 into W by H plus 0.264 divided by epsilon effective minus 0.258 W by H plus 0.8 that will be equation number 2. These are the basic things that you should keep in your mind before going to the design of rectangular patch antennas. The following are the steps involved in the design of a rectangular patch antenna. The first step, for an efficient radiator, a practical width that leads a good variation efficiency is given by W is equal to 1 by FR into root of mu0 zero epsilon0 zero into root of 2 by epsilon r plus 1. That is equal to V0 by FR into root of 2 by epsilon r plus 1. Because we know that 1 by mu0 zero epsilon0 zero is V0. V0 is the free space velocity of light. The second step. Determine the effective dielectric constant using the equation 1. We saw the equation 1. That is we have to find the effective dielectric constant using this equation. The third step, once the W is found using this step 1, determine the extension length delta L using equation 2. We saw the equation 2. Delta L can be determined using this equation. That is, if you know the effective um, dielectric constant, then definitely you can find delta L. Okay. So, you found delta L using equation number 2 from the previous slide. The fourth one, the actual length of the patch antenna can now be determined using the equation L is equal to 1 by FR root of epsilon effective into mu0 zero epsilon 0 minus 2 delta L. Understood? So, therefore, you can find the or how we design the rectangular patch antenna is done by this steps. Thank you.